photography has a 120 year old history. That goes back, we actually have this pioneer Frenchman in the late 1890s who took a huge camera, made a waterproof case and went underwater to take pictures of marine life. But that was an inspiration for many people following. And particularly in the last 60 years where when free diving, scuba diving has developed, photography has just sort of uh, galloped on. It's uh, really is it's how we see the underwater world. It's the photographer and the research workers link to the public to be able to photograph, to be able to film the underwater world and show um, what it's like, um, encouraging other people to visit, of course, as well. But for maritime archaeologists, and that's my speciality with photography for maritime archaeology, it's a way of bringing our past, our past of shipwreck excavation, and forward in time. The fact we can revisit a wreck site through photography, we and anyone else, um, for decades afterwards. Um, the, when photography began, existing cameras were put in waterproof boxes, not always waterproof, they would often leak, but uh, that's uh, the cross we have to bear as uh, underwater photographers. Everything leaks eventually. Um, but we took existing cameras in housings, and here we have several examples of these. For 20 years, this was the Rolls Royce of underwater cameras, um, designed by a, a very well known uh, pioneer, Hans Haas. But a camera that was superb to use. It's the camera that's obsolete now rather than leaving the housing. But it made a bulky, bulky unit to have to work with. And the underwater photography changed when this camera came out. The camera that was waterproof to 50 meters could be just slung around the neck, carried with you always, and it really, that freed up underwater photography. Although it freed up as the modern advance, which in the last 10 years is digital, where we've gone from using film to the digital record. And digital cameras have, have freed up photography as never before. Now, the quality of underwater photographs from even a beginner is better than we who have had 40 years experience um, could get in the past. So that's changed things enormously. I'm still, and many of us are still using cameras in waterproof housings. This is a very high quality digital single edge reflex camera. But this housing allows me to use a whole range of lenses. It allows me to do almost all the things underwater that I can do above water. That means very wide angle photographs. That means extreme close up photographs. So that is the sort of, uh, I guess, the Rolls Royce of, of use these days. The thing that has really changed is a small digital camera. Already it's starting to get bulky again, but here I have two cameras, two identical cameras in underwater camera cases. These are good level, high level, but compact digital cameras, and this is for doing stereo, for 3D photography. That's something that um, I have done, that we have done in the WA Museum Department of Maritime Archaeology for 35 years now. It's, record our wreck sites in 3D so that we can actually see a 3D view of the underwater world forever into the future. And they're just two cameras that are fired together. The, this has a special viewfinder that um, I've added, very wide angle lenses to cut through the water to be able, for us to be able to see plenty of water. And the two are fired together as simple as that, and then that gives the simulation of the left eye and the right eye, and they can be viewed on a 3D television or with a 3D viewer, and it's like having a physical model in front of you, and you can see that in 3D. These cameras also can be just taken off and used just like that, and that is really the model equivalent of the the best of the film cameras. So Nikonis camera there, that was our, our main photographic tool for many years, but now 
uh, as superb as they are, the quality is superb, they're replaced totally now by digital.